you've ever wondered why skydivers jump out of perfectly good airplanes, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Folks, thanks for joining us for another special webinar. Uh, I am your host, Ryan Faluna, and I am here with James Bradley, who trades the Strat. James also goes by Jim. Jim, welcome. How you doing, man? You look pumped up right now. Pumped up. <laughs> Let's go, let's go. What's good? What's good, Ryan? So, <laughs> so thankful to be here. Hello, Stratters. You're all my family and I love you all. Awesome. Uh, you are getting me fired up. That's always a good sign. So thanks for joining us on this uh, on a uh, Wednesday evening. Normally we run these on Friday, but we had had to accommodate James's schedule. He is a pilot. So James, again, thank you for taking time out of your busy day. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. The first thing that I want to ask you is considering your background, how did you get involved in trading? And then how did you find the strat? Right. First, I want to tell everybody that's watching this, they need to subscribe to all of your all of your uh, amazing things that you that you offer. I think that your new service is fantastic and just amazing. And I really appreciate it for everybody would really give a strong shout out to Ryan for this. This is Thank amazing. You very much. Uh, you have to realize that uh, this opportunity, you're getting a lot of free gems here. I'm doing this for nothing and you got to understand something i'm not getting paid anything for this right. and i'm not selling anything i'm not selling anything i'm just here to help you i want you to become a better trader i am a risk manager number one numero uno i'm a trader number two okay so everybody needs to get their crayons out get their pencils out get their pens out because we're about to start oh yeah okay so i started off trading company stock and it's not remarkable it was nothing interesting so i think we should just move on from there i basically had um a lot of friends that were involved in trading back in 99 during the tech wreck and i had a huge huge loss in 99 i had two hundred fifty thousand dollar loss and that kind of brought me into hmm why don't fundamentals work hmm i don't know why, right so i think it's really important that a person for me looks at charts and I glean information from data. I love data. Being an airline pilot, right? Um, my whole, like, I'm immersed in data, right? Altitude, heading, airspeed, all those things. It's amazing how they translate in, into trading because on my screens, I'm basically scanning all the data. And that's basically what I do as a pilot. So I think it's really important that everybody understands that, um, what I'm doing and what I'm going to try to help you with today is more for advanced people, okay? This is, and, and I'm gonna get into the strat, Ryan. I just wanna say this. Um, you need to realize that my one minute charts are the same thing you can duplicate on an hour or a daily. It's just, you have to have other tools to make it successful. Does that make sense? Yeah, it sure does. That that makes complete sense. And, and I'm, I'm really glad that, first of all, I love when people share stories about losses because in my own personal life, losses are what molded me into the trader that I am today. Losses are part of this game. You need to learn how to accept them. So when someone shares a story like that, it, it makes it more impactful for me. So I can't wait to hear what you're going to say. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Saying that. Thank you for saying that because you got to realize, and I think everybody's out there, I think when you go through a lot of, rough times in your life, right? It, it really, I hate to say it, but if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger, right that's boss? That's true, 100% that's true. And so just a little bit of background on me, I was a, a pilot for 10 years over in Asia and the Middle East. And I, I've been to 56 countries and I got to live in eight different countries. And I'll tell you something, people around the world are amazing. They greeted me with open arms and that's why I just want to give back. <sighs> Let's talk about Rob Smith for a second. Oh my God, the strat, right? Shout out to Maine, shout out to Sarah, shout out to Didi, shout out to T.O., shout out to uh, Clark. All these people are fantastic. Uh, um, Lauren too, everybody out there, right? I love you all. You know, it's tough to have the big long list in front of you, right? But um, I appreciate interacting with all you guys on Twitter. So the strat is an amazing thing, right? As you know, uh, Ryan, and what you're doing with the strat is between time, con uh, time frame continuity and broad informations and price action, you can really, really do a lot. It's amazing what you can do because you're, you're basically trading the truth. Am I right? Right. Okay, great. So 
I took the strat from, okay, let me tell you how I met Rob, right? So I had a really, really bad blow up in XIV. Uh, I was one of the biggest losers. And <laughs> again, we're going to talk another loss, right? Uh, half a million dollars. I lost 500,000 in that. And uh, <laughs> funny, right? I, I'm not, I shouldn't say it's funny, but um, <laughs> I introduced to Rob and he showed me the strat and I was, wow, this is so fantastic. So I took my whole retirement. I put in XIV using the strats. And it worked. I turned 250,000 to 500,000 like that. I mean, I had a lot of trading experience. So that's kind of why I plunged on that. And, and you know, people can fault me for this, but you got to understand that XIV blew up um, like between four o'clock and 4.15. And there really, really wasn't any way to get out of it for myself. So I don't really don't say that, you know, oh, you know, I didn't have a stop loss in or anything like that because it kind of didn't happen when I was able to get out, right? So as far as the strat is concerned, you know, your one, two, threes should have already been learned and, and taught by, you know, your, your peers, which is, you know, Sarah and Jermaine and, you know, obviously Rob, the creator, right? So I took those and I just basically kept chiseling down the time frame. So I went from, you know, I started on weekly and then I went to daily, Ryan, and then after daily, I went to the 60 and after 60, I went to the 30 and after 30, I went to 15. I'm like, hmm, this is pretty interesting, right? So but the last four years or so, I became an expert in like the one minute and trading the tape. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the tape, but not right now. So what do you think, boss? Yeah, it's, that sounds great. I mean, I mean, I get asked about that all the time. You know, I, I know a lot of traders are short term traders. So to be able to hear how the strat works on one minute time frames. I mean, I'm, I'm as excited as our viewers are right now. So what's the, what's the first example we're going to dive into here? Let's get this. So, okay, I got a lot of um, groundwork I have to work here. So, because, you know, my, I'm thinking so many thoughts, right? And I have so much to give you guys. So, Ryan, you're going to have to remind me, but I want to go through my pre-market, um, like, rituals, as you call them, okay? Okay. So, talk about that. But, um, like, I, like, I do swing trading. Okay, I swing trade also, but it's in retirement accounts. And I don't like putting that on Twitter because I really don't want my followers or the people that I'm with, I shouldn't call them followers or family, uh, to get misunderstood with mixing time frames. Does everybody understand? It? Don't mix time frames. I don't like people that have style drift. I don't want one day, oh, I'm gonna do pullbacks and the next day I'm gonna do breakouts. No, 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 no. You gotta become an expert in one area. Generalists lose, experts win. Got that? Okay, write it down. Okay, so let's, with that being said, let's talk about, because you know, you see people style drift all the time. Oh, this doesn't work. I see it all the time. And I really want to just like, hey, stick to one thing, become an expert in it, right? Um, so how about we talk about pre-market prep? Are you okay with that? Sure am. We have a show called pre-market prep here. You know I'm good for that. Uh so Mr. Ryan Faluna and all his members, do you realize that pre-market prep is the cornerstone to successful trading, okay? So with that being said, a person is going to set their clock every time they wake up at the same time. So I wanna just tell you, this works for me, okay? Now you tweak it or do whatever you wanna do for yourself, but remember, this is exactly the mindset and the proper methodology that works for me. Okay, I'm not saying you got to do this. I'm not saying it works for everybody. So I set my clock every time at the same time. I get up and, you know, you wake up one or two minutes before the clock, before the alarm. I do it right? every day. It's the most infuriating thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very blessed. I'm so thankful to be here, Ryan. So the first thing I do is when I wake up, boss, is I'm pretty much a person that thanks, you know, God and, and how how thankful I am for the things in my life, you know, everything, right? Mm -hmm. You know, my health, you know, my friends, my family, I go through a little you know, laundry list in my head and it just kind of makes me feel, hey man, you know, we're all here, things are going good and they really are really are good. I don't want to say, oh, this is really bad times. Sorry, this is great. This is great times. And you're going to get it by the end of this webinar that I almost said it, freaking, <laughs> freaking positivity, my friend positivity is number one. You got to be positive, positive mental attitude. People right. call it mindset. I call it positive mental attitude. Okay. So we get up. First thing I'm going to do is make my bed. I know you guys are all laughing at that, but I always want to have one sense of accomplishment first, right? You want to mm -hmm. accomplish one thing and make it successful. Um, 
So after you, I make my bed, I'll go all shave because I'm going to treat this like a profession, just like I'm going to work, you know, at the airport, I'm going to dress and I'm going to go into the kitchen. I'm going to make my coffee because I do believe in stimulants. Okay, let's make that clear, right? I'm talking about caffeine. I'm talking about, you know, power energy drinks. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about anything that gets you pumped up, right? Minus, you know, what we're talking illegal stuff, right? (laughs) Obviously. So, okay. So then after that, I'm going to go in and I'm going to go through all my sources for my, for my candidates. So let me explain to you how I go about the, the thinking process of what I'm looking for. So let's say that you've bought a stock. I don't care if you're short term or long term and you see a gap of 15% or 10%. Don't you think Ryan, that's pretty normal that you're going to take a little bit of profit when the market opens. Wouldn't that make sense? Absolutely. In fact, I just said that on a webinar earlier today. Okay. So what I, I I'm begging your subscribers here and the people who are watching this to understand it's very vitally important to have the psychology why people do stuff behind behind trading because you can always position yourself on the other side of it. That's what you're trying to do. You want to be the opposite of her, basically, right? So if you have a big gap up and then when the market opens, it starts selling off, that's healthy, right? Because people are taking profit, mm-hmm. or at least part right then when you see some type of a setup that's when you're going to jump in and go long so i have basically gap up plays around i play i play gap down plays those are most of them and then also i pay, play runners so if, and it's all based on drum roll high volume boss high volume i i lost initially when he started doing this because i was playing stocks that didn't have too much volume and the spread between the two was was not very good Right. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. again, you know, I have this pro- problem of getting off topic. So what am I looking for when I sit down at the computer screen? I'm going through different sources to get my gap list. Now, today's gap list, Rob had a great one. Right. He, I think he had Netflix. He had um, um, what the heck else? Uh, Alibaba. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And then uh, um, something was a couple others on there. Um, and then I had BA on there and XPEV. Right. Okay. So, so I, I go through Rob's gap list. <clears throat> so I recommend looking at his stuff. And then I'm also looking at Howard Lindzen has like a Twitter what's hot by, by social media. And so I look at that and then I'll also look at like, um, like news articles, like regular new market watch or Yahoo or whatever. I just kind of go through the, you know, the big names to see what's in play. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also in, um, there's another website called the stock stock market watch and it has like a list of gap downs and gap ups. Mm -hmm. Okay. And with associated volume. And then I'm going to get a shout out to uh, one of the other rooms uh, that I I get some good information from is great stock picks. And we'll talk about that later. Right. But he's got a, a list too. great stock picks. Mike and Wayne are in there and they're great traders. Okay, so <clears throat> and real quick, real quick, just a shameless plug. At Benzinga, we also have gappers up and down every oh, single morning. All right, I but didn't know. I, I di- but I digress. Go ahead. <laughs> Great, I love that. And I do have your new stream, and I do see the the ticker symbols. And mm-hmm. I mean, that's what I kind of was saying. That's that's kind of part of your subscription, yep, right? Yep. So that's what I mean when I first said when I got on. Hey, let's subscribe to your service. I kind of automatically assume that. So I apologize about that. Okay? No, 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 no needed. I was making a joke. No, <laughs> but I want everybody on that way. So it's all good. So, okay. So then after I get down maybe 10 candidates, then around eight o'clock, um, nine o'clock Eastern time, I'll whittle those down to about maybe between zero to six. So why do I say zero? Because yeah. sometimes the best trade is no trade. Yes, Sensei. Very good. Awesome. Absolutely. You got to have the wherewithal to walk away from the computer screen. There's been several times I sat on my hands on my like, Jim, don't trade. Jim, don't trade. And by the way, my name's Jim. You can call me Jim. My professional name is James Bradley. But anyway, so you put your hands on and you put your uh, hands behind you. And it's like, don't trade, walk away. And then you never know. You might have saved yourself thousands of dollars. Yep. You know? crazy amount of money. And I just want to make one more plug to like Amazon because online shopping is always cheaper than gambling. Right. Got that right. <laughs> so, okay. So now 
uh, it's 9.15 and I got my list, right? So I have, I have, so this is really important. I probably should have showed you my screen, but it's not, big, not a big deal. On the top screen, I have the S&P 500, okay? So the S&P 500 in the one minute time frame is at the very top and I have three screens across the bottom and I have two on each, correct? Okay, two, two, two and charts two. on each screen. Perfect. And one minute, one minute, and of course, pre-market, of course. And this is going to be a great topic because I like talking about this. Okay, so remind me because I don't want to talk about it now. <laughs> so after I set this up, I put all my trade tickets in there, right? Okay, so if it's a large stock, I'm going by price movement. This is how I think. If I see 10 cents, 10 cents, 10 cents, right? 10 cents, like on the chart, I'm going to go with maybe a thousand shares, like with you follow me on that? Does that make sense? Yeah. Are you talking um, about the spread? No, I'm not talking about the spread between the bidding I'm talking about on the chart, the, the price action on the chart. You're looking for, you know, you're not looking for like two or three cents, like 95, 97, 99 on the right hand side. You're looking for like, you know, $235 and 10 cents, $235 and 20 cents, 200. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you're looking for it to move in 10 cent increments as opposed to single cent increments. Minimum 10, minimum gotcha. 10 cents. You know, Tesla might be 50 cents, right? You know, or Netflix might be 50 cents. So it might be just for short, or just for fun, $100 and 50 cents, $101, and 50 cents. You get my drift, right? Yeah, okay. I do. And so generally that happens with higher price stocks, right? So you just mentioned Amazon, Tesla, those stocks generally are going to move more than just one penny at a time. Totally with you. Correct. And um, remind me too, I want to go into like, mm, Stocks that have their own personality and I have a go-to list, right? So let's, might as well talk about that now because it's part of the um, assessment process for my candidates, right? So when I'm looking at um, a candidates to put in there, I have a really good history with Moderna, M-R-N-A, mm -hmm. right? And Boeing, B-A, right? Mm -hmm. And because I'm familiar with the way they trade, I will always have them on, on the right screen, on the top and the bottom over there. And as you saw, yesterday was a BA trade and today was a BA trade, if you follow me on Twitter, right? And we'll talk about the BA trade today. But um, with that being said, um, at around 8.15, Ryan, I'm going to walk away from the screen. So I have everything set up, you know, all my trade tickets filled out. Market orders, by the way. Hello, market orders. I don't use, you know, um, limit orders ever, okay? Um, because there's such a tight bid-ask spread. When I want to get in, I want to get in. When I want to get out, I want to get out. Okay. There's no screwing around. Right. And you can't do that with, with limit orders. Um, so, the, so the way I would summarize that real quickly is remember market orders guarantee that you get a fill limit orders guarantee that you get a price. And what, and what Jim is talking about right now is if I need to get in, then I need to make sure I get filled and the same exists on the exit. If I need to get out, I need to get out. Market order is going to be the way that you do that. Makes total sense, Jim. Very well put. Thank you so much. So how are we doing on time? Awesome. That was perfect. Okay. So Ryan, this is really kind of the mindset I'm going to bring you into between 915 and 930. So this works for me. This is for like newer, middle and advanced traders. This is what I'm not going to tell you for the expert levels because they got their own thing, way of doing stuff. And they'll probably be laughing at what I'm about to say. Okay. So Ryan, when I'm done with setting up the computer, I walk away, if I got to go to the bathroom, whatever, I'm going over here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I have a beautiful, beautiful, this is Florida and I have a beautiful lake back here. Everybody see it? It's awesome. I love it. Okay. So I walk out there. I walk out there and I'll take breaths. And this is the part of the mindset program that I'm, I'm going to, is priceless. Because if I honestly would have known this, it would have, it would have changed my trading a lot or a lot better. Because everybody's got rules. Oh, cut your losers. Let your winners run. Um, Re-enter trades. Um, you, get, you get my drift, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's got freaking ideas. But the problem is, is nobody can stick to it because they don't have that, that hardcore inner um, killer attitude, right? So I'm going to go through this right now, what I do, and I hope it, I hope it helps you guys. So, Ryan, I'm going to take many, many deep breaths. That's how I start out. Mm-hmm. It's just going to be a, a, a feeling, an image of myself, literally with fire coming out of all of my body, just emanating like I am supremely confident. Okay, and I said this on Rob's, um, on over the mic at Rob's, and it's recorded. I really strongly recommend everybody goes back and listen to that. But, Ryan, I am the artist 
I'm the painter, but I'm also the canvas. I'm the sculptor, but I'm also the marble. I am Morpheus and I am also <laughs> Neo. You must be a motivator, a self coach, and most importantly, a therapist. You gotta be your own therapist. Right? And am I following you? You feel me, Ryan? One hundred percent. I'm loving everything you're putting down. Okay, cool. So after I'm going through this whole thought process, apex king, warrior, predator, I'm walking back in the house and I'm on fire. Right, boss? I'm on fire. That doesn't mean I'm going to jump and take a trade, boss. It doesn't mean I'm going to click, 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 click. It doesn't mean I'm going to go after everything I see. No, no, no. Only an A plus setup. Oh, Ryan, Jim, what's an A plus setup? Everybody's. What's an A plus setup, Jim? Well, guess what? It's your trade. It's your trade. How do you find your trade? After years of experience, people, after years of experience, how can I sit there and tell you to follow me when you got to find yourself? Am I right, boss? No, you're absolutely right. 100%. Awesome. Okay. So finding your trade. God, I'm so thankful I remember this. This is a gem I'm going to drop on everybody, and it's going to be so hard for everybody to do. I really want everybody to sit there and play with one or two shares until you're like sick of it, right? Until you're like, got your process down and you got your journals. Ryan, please remind me to talk about journals. Okay. And (laughs) you're going to have all these, all these trades, trade, 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 hundreds, 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 hundreds. Oh, did I say one month? Did I say two months? No, you can't learn to trade in a couple months. It's the same thing as being a freaking pilot or a doctor or a lawyer. Stop it, people. This takes a long time to work. If anything, I'm going to deter you. This is, this is a funny thing. Everybody's out there trying to get you to join their service and trade. I'm trying to say, hey, realize this is a big endeavor. It's a big endeavor, right? It's huge. This is a business. You got you to gotta take money, hard-earned money, and you're going to say, okay, I'm willing to let it go here, go away. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. I, I, I've been telling people, I deal with people that are new all the time and they say, they ask me for advice. And obviously I'm not a financial advisor. I don't have a series seven license. I can't trade for you and I can't recommend stocks. But what I can tell you is that you need to be in absolute control of your own emotions every single day. And Perfect. you should not be trading with money you cannot afford to lose. So if you're talking, you, you're sitting there talking about your hard earned money and you're looking at that and you're like, boy, I don't want to lose this. If that's your mindset, you've almost already failed. You need to understand that in order to make money in this business, you need to put money at risk. And when you put money at risk, that means some things are not going to work. That's just the reality of it. You you have to be able to accept that. Love it. Love it. Yep. And uh, people got to really need to trade a lot, trade for a long period of time and pay your dues. And then and everybody's like, well, can I do this with 25,000? Well, it's called inventory. Right, Ryan? Inventory. You know, you can't go into business with just a couple pieces of handkerchiefs or widgets I'm going to sell, right? Mm-hmm. You want to have a do- solid amount. What's a solid amount? I don't know, at least 50000 And then you're going to have to get margin because you see my trades. I mean, my trades are 250000 500000 right? Mm-hmm. I mean, can, can, you go to, can you go to like a room where there's like a lot lower price stocks between $2 and $10? Absolutely. I have no problems with that. I think Many rooms out there are fantastic. I just, I my winning rate much better with the large cap stocks. Yeah, but you see, know? you know, you know, that's an important point too. You have to know yourself, and you have to know what works for you. I started the same way. My first account ever had five hundred dollars in it. My second right. account ever had two thousand dollars in it. Guess what I was doing? I was playing penny stocks. I was playing stocks that were, you know, one, two cents up to 30, 50 cents. And I was thinking, oh, I can't wait till these go to $20. It, it just, it doesn't work like that. And, and it wasn't until I found some of the more predictable things that I was comfortable with. And for me, those happened to be larger cap stocks. They moved more predictably. It was easier for me to pick it up. And, and, and perhaps most importantly, it was easier for me to repeat my process with those as opposed to playing things that were completely out of left field that I had no experience with boss nailed it man and let me reemphasize what you said to all your friends and people here process is everything discipline is everything process and discipline wait what did i say process and discipline wait one more time i'm sorry process process and discipline (laughs) you adhere to that i love one of my tweets sorry (laughs) 
which like I said, you got to have supreme confidence to do a one minute shit, right? You got to do mm-hmm. this, right? Am I, am I sitting down? That's not my personality, right? You got to find your trade. If your trade is sit there and go, okay, I'm comfortable playing the one hour. I can just click the button and, and do it. Okay, great. I, I love you. I respect you. But this now as a pilot, I'm a lot more laid back. Just letting you know. Okay? But as far as this is concerned, I'm pumped up because I want everybody to see what it takes to do what I'm doing. This is the mindset I'm in. This is the thought process I'm in. This is the discipline I'm in. This is what you got to hammer every day if you want to be successful. I only had seven losing days last year, unofficially, sorry. But um, you know, I don't think that's that bad. You know what I'm saying? And that's just because I'm like sticking to my process. I'm scanning all the data instantly. And I'm, I'm doing something over and over and over again that I'm very comfortable with. I shouldn't say comfortable. You're never comfortable. By the way, talk about something about life. And, you know, please jump in any time, Ryan, is... I think that, you know, having a difficult life is really a blessing in some ways. You know what I'm saying? And, and no matter Absolutely. what, it can come in many forms, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. First of all, the way great things get done is stepping outside of your comfort zone. If, 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 if doing great things were easy, everyone would do it. There's a reason why really great strides are, are either rare or are only done by certain people, et cetera, et cetera. Being right. able, being able to learn from your mistakes, it's, it's, it's invaluable. There, there's nothing else like it. Right. And you only have so much time on the surf, right? Got to go for it, right. You got to go for it. Right. And I hate to say you're going to die one day, but the fact is you got to, you're going to, right. So you better just get on a, on a horse and do something if you want to. And remember, I, I, I just want to read, sorry, I got some notes. I just want to make sure I cover everything. I took like 30 pages of notes. I want to help everybody so much, you know, and you know, please remember that this is a full out effort and it's another job, another career. I just want to reemphasize that because it's really yeah, annoying. It's true. People, people saying, Oh, I'm going to just trade part-time, you know, and sorry, it's a business. This is not for fun. You want to have fun, go to the casino. <laughs> right? that's, a re- that's really good advice too. <laughs> so are we ready to do some examples or you have more uh, prep stuff to talk about? Yeah. I always try to be better 1% every day, visualize everything. So, okay, good. I'm so happy. I looked at my notes. So Ryan, when I'm sitting out here, looking out over the water here, I already have my six charts in my head, right? Maybe four charts, maybe three charts. And I've already boss. This is so, so, so important. God, this is a gem right here. Write this down, everybody. You have to visualize every outcome of you pressing the button, press the button. Okay, and we'll go through with the charts. But I just want to, I want to give everybody a little prep warm up right now because it's so important. If I click the button because I got my, my trigger, okay, A plus only, no trigger, no trade. If you get your trigger and you click the button, you have to assess at that point what's going to happen, boss. Is it going to go sideways and I'm going to start scaling out because I'm actually considered at a stop loss or is it going to pop up because everybody wanted in when I wanted in and I'm going to immediately go all out at the top or is it going to grind up and I'm going to click add. Oh my God. I just, this, that's the key to my success right there, right there. What I just told you really. Okay. So let's play in the downside now. So I'll repeat it for you in the opposite. Okay. So say I'm going to short something, by the way, I would say probably 80% of my trades are shorts, Ryan. You know why? I, I know you know about, about shorting, right? Shorting is when people want out, they get all out, right? Isn't yep. that true? Yep. So that's why shorts work better than longs. That's why shorts work better than longs. Okay, because when everybody wants out, they click the all out button. When they want to, when they're, oh, it's grinding up or it's going up, people are going to scale out. That's why it doesn't drop so much. That's my opinion. Right. Yeah, no, th- there's there's an old adage that I've that I've heard from the very beginning. The market in terms of price, it's a staircase up, but it's an elevator down. And, it, and, it, and it's that dichotomy that you are trying to capture as a trader. And so if you want that big move down and you're going to see that more on the short side, it makes sense. That's what you're playing for. Awesome. It, the, the, the other thing that I want to you tell me if this is correct, Jim. This is something that you figured out about yourself. For me, I'm a long bias trader. I, I, I don't try to execute everything in one minute time frames. I try to do something, you know, over over several days. So for me, the staircase up is more of my personality. But if that's not what your personality is, you have to recognize that ahead of time and then cater to that. Is that a fair assessment? Yes, it is. I'm 100% on board with you and I respect you. 
So let me give you some brotherhood advice, right? So I strongly recommend that you also learn to short. And here's why. Because we're in an up market. We're in a huge bull market. That's cool, right? Mm -hmm. But eventually we're going to be going in a bear market sometime, mm -hmm. even a bear market. And, and you're going to make a crazy amount of money shorting. I like that. I'll, I'll take that. And, and, and just to be clear, I do actually play short sometimes Good. using Good. puts. So I do have oh. some experience that I, I would consider myself a long bias trader, but I do have experience on the short side. Oh. Perfect. Perfect. So let's talk about on the, on the, on the short side. So when something sells off, right, pre-market, because it's some bad news release or something like that, you know, maybe just some bigger institution want to sell. Um, when it market opens, what is the psychology behind what do you think the price action is going to happen? Do you mind if I ask you, boss? Is it okay? No, it's good. That's fine. So you're saying something gaps down. What's the market psychology? Yeah. People that are believers in that stock are going to want to buy it at a discount. People that are in that stock are going to say, how low can it go? I want out. Perfect. Beautifully put. Exactly correct. Ryan's feeling me, man. I love it. So, so what we're doing now as a minute trader is when it starts going up, we're looking for a little bit of a, of a spike up, right? Oh, people want it. Boom, they hit the end button. Then everybody's waiting to see, oh, is it going to keep going up or is it going to sell off? Now, here's the beautiful gem right here for you. It depends on the stock, okay, as to if people are going to want to put in a portfolio and it's a long-term hold, people will buy and they'll just close their eyes, right? Like Disney, for example. Yep. Apple. It'll be like a long-term portfolio hold with everybody, right? How are we doing on time, boss? Good. Okay. So I'm looking for some type of a sell signal on a short, a topping. And then when it starts coming down, that's when I'm going to hit the sell short. Okay. And it's the same psychology as a gap up, a little bit of a sell off, and then it's going to go. And everybody likes to buy um, the open, right? Like, like it, if it opens, they're going to buy above the open and if it's a if sell off, they're going to sell short below the close. So I'm already positioned in before that. So there's another gem for you. I position myself before that open opening on the on the 930 mark. Does that make sense, Ryan? Yes, it does. Okay, great. And we'll show you in the charts. Okay, so um, we talked about visualization. Um, so does everybody understand? And do you understand, Ryan, that when uh, I'm going to buy on a long. I need it to happen instantly. I want it to pop right there because I want to get a spot where everybody goes in. So here's where level two comes in. Level two comes in, boss, when you're at a round number, zero, zero, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75 or zero, zero, right? And it's not just those round numbers, but it's got to do with you know, the setup, right? Like if it's a bottom, if it's at the bottom of a broadening formation, if it's got an inside candle, a number one, okay, as we call them one in the strat, you know? Um, so yeah, that's what I'm looking for, right? On a, on, a, on a gap up and a little bit of a sell off and I'm gonna go long. It's really that simple. It's the same repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. If you look at all my trades are pretty much the same thing, right? And it's just a matter of getting to be an expert and seeing this. So let's do a little bit of a exercise here, if you don't mind. Man, I'm so happy this is going good. So Ryan, watch this, okay, ready? Go one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. That was ten seconds. That's how long most of my trades are. Ten seconds. Anybody can click a button in that ten second region. You know, my my shortest one I think was three or six seconds. Today was ten seconds. Most of them are a minute. I think my longest one's like four minutes, if I'm not mistaken. You know, but. You get my point? It's, it's really kind of a long time, actually. You know, if you're focused on one stock and you're watching a level two, the bid and the ask go up and down. Okay, now would be a good time to, to, to tell you this. This is kind of going to blow your mind. If you put some tape around your head or around all your head and stuff, because I don't want anybody's head to blow up with this one. <laughs> you know, <laughs> candles, candles or bars are a visual representation of the executions. You don't even need charts. Boom, you don't even need charts. You can <laughs> trade off of a level two. If you just give me a level two, I'll trade off of a level two. I don't even need a chart. I don't even care, you know? It's amazing. Truly, the truly, 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 it is the truth. So, yeah. So anyway, I'm usually done by one or two minutes in. Um, I use the market as an ATM, Ryan, right? Awesome. As an ATM. So could you make 
a regular salary on what I do. In February, I think it was in 2020, when the COVID thing hit, I made one of my best months. I made 40,000 in one month and I was only working like a minute a day, mm-hmm. you know? And I'm not saying that's, if you take 40,000 and multiply it over 12 months, I didn't really do that every month, but it's still really good. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, Plus yeah. you gotta have another job. So that's another thing I want to tell everybody. It really takes a lot of pressure and stress off you. Would you not agree, Ryan, when you have another source of income? Absolutely. hundred percent. That that's for, for me, well, I actually did try to do this full time, nothing else. And I was not very successful at it. And one of the reasons is, is because I let my emotions control me instead of the other way around having another job or having some type of guaranteed income, no matter what it was completely removed that situation for me. Just totally got rid of it. And then I was focusing on the charts. I was focusing on the trade. I wasn't letting my emotions control me. I was acting in an analytical fashion, changed everything for me. Awesome. Beautiful. Really well put boss. So, all right, let's flip to a couple more things here and then we should go to the, maybe there's some of the charts. What do you think about that? Yeah, let's do it. Do you understand the the part about what I'm saying about grinding up and versus popping up? Do you understand that? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody wants in at the same time, right? And when you want in at the same time, everybody wants in at the same time, right? Okay, so a uh, couple more things here. Um, there's the three so- sides of this. There's the mental, there's the spiritual, and there's the physical, right? In my opinion, I think all three of those should be in line if you really want to be at top of your game. What say you? Yeah, I think that's really good. Your your headspace needs to be totally aligned. Uh, and, and, and I'll give you another example. So there are, there are days where I'm just not feeling it. Uh, something's going on with a family or a friend or something like that. Some external force is weighing on me. And I've learned at this point that if I'm not in the right shape, don't trade. Because you said it earlier, online shopping is cheaper than donating money and a whole bunch of losing trades. Well, you know what? If you can identify some of the symptoms of, of what's going to cause a loss and you can you can attack that early on, you're going to be more successful. And for me, when, when I'm in a poor mental state for whatever the reason is losing an animal, losing a family member, losing a friend, whatever the case is, if I'm in a bad mental state, chances are that's going to be reflected in my trading. And I don't want that. That's awesome. That's awesome. So one more thing, I know I have like 25 more pages to go, but we should go to the charts, right? Yeah, let's, let's, let's move to the charts. We're running out of time here. Right. Last comment. Trading is harsh, but it's not difficult. In other words, the market can be harsh, but it's not difficult. You are, you need, the, the stock can do whatever it wants to do, but you got to react to it. That's all it is. That's all I want to say about that. Yeah. Okay. That's actually kind of deep philosophy there too. Okay. But anyway, let's go to the charts, boss. All right, let's do it. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. Let me get rid of the splash screen here that we had for you. I pulled up the Benzinga Pro charts. I did pull up Boeing. I know this is one of the, the charts that you want to go over, but which one did you want to start with? Uh, today's Boeing trade, if you got it. And so this is it. This is this is today, right? So so just so you guys can get get a uh, familiarity with where I am. Here is today's action in Boeing. We are on the one minute chart for James here. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this chart, and I'm going to show. This is this blue shaded area is the pre market. All right, the pre market ends, and that's where you get this black area. So Jim, take it away. Okay, so what I need you to do is take your cursor and expand over where that one little jump is in pre-market, where that little peak is in the pre-market, more to the left, right there. Okay, now screen over and go to about maybe the third. No, boss, you're too far. Sorry. Right, right there, right there. Now, now br- expand that out to like the third candle past the open or fourth candle past the open. So the thir- nine, nine, oh, thirty-two. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, man. Like this? More, because I need to see the open. Here's the open. Yeah. Now, can you make that those three candles bigger? Oh, sure. These three? Uh, I'm sorry, man. Wh- which candles are you talking about? Hmm. Is that, that doesn't look, let, let, let me open up that on mine, and I, I want to see. Let's see. BA. Sorry about that, everybody. BA2. So the tweet today was BA spy long bias, one minute candle charts, enter 213.46 at 931.09 above the hammer and all out top of the broadening formation at 213.79, 931 and 19 seconds. Okay, so here's the screenshot that you sent me. So let's just work with the screenshot since it's a little bit more difficult on the chart. All right, can you, can you see this screenshot here? Beautifully, this is perfect. This is very helpful. Right, Thank let's you. do it this way. 
So do you see where my cursor is on the hammer right there? Right here. Yeah. Now my bias is long. Does everybody agree with that? I went in saying I have a long bias, right? Because that's it gapped up. Yes. It's not is that obvious, right? It gapped up from yesterday. Right. Okay. So <laughs> it's obvious if that's a hammer right there, I'm going to go long above the hammer because my, my bias is long. And then I click the button on the tape. So when I saw aggregation of, of, of buyers um, building around that price, right? I clicked the buy button and I already had that blue line written in there roughly. That mm -hmm. was the broadening formation that we've talked about so much that Jermaine and Sarah and, you know, um, everybody, um, you know, um, Dee Dee should, and Joe and the whole crew. Yeah. And Joe, by the way, apologize. Of course, you're my brother. So thanks. You know, so um, ways of the master, right? Yep. So, um, so yeah, long above that. And then when it, when it came back to the top of the, the broad information, I just clicked, um, you know, sell everything, sell 2000 shares. And, you know, I get filled, I get filled, whatever I get filled. Right. I, this is like really literally being a painter. I want everybody to think about, it. I got a paintbrush and I'm just kind of, you know, painting a swoop. Right. I don't, I, and nothing's perfect. Right. Especially on a one minute time frame, you don't have really control over where you get out at. So I got out at almost top ticked. I think I got out 213.81 or something like that, which was really a, it was not a bad trade. Six hundred and fifty dollars for 10 seconds. Yeah, that's not bad at all, man. I'll take that any day. Right. And then and just to be honest, we just show you. I mean, I literally just put my gym clothes on. I went to the gym and I did a million other things. I have other businesses, you know, talk to other people. And then I came back here for this, you know, so. Hey man, I'm super happy to be doing this with us, brother. Yeah, me too. This is awesome. You got, you got any questions about this? Is anybody having questions about there? You want to well, move on? So, the so let's look at the, let's compare this to the tweet. Look, let's go through. Oh, you know what? I actually opened up the wrong tweet. Forgive me here. I am doing my best to work through some of these screenshots. So I apologize if, if I get the, uh, if I get the wrong screenshot pulled up here. So, so let's just real quickly run through this trade again. Let's just recap. You tweeted this out this morning. You, this is the long bias that you were talking about. You're using right. the one. Jump in here for a second. Go ahead. You you see where I put SPY in there also? Oh, yeah. You see where it says SPY? That's important because, uh, help me with this, a rising ship, a rising tide raises all ships, right? Yep. Okay. You rising know that tide old. lifts all boats. Right. It's, uh, that adage is pretty uh, obvious. So the BA, you know, is a pretty big player, right? It's, it's in, the, you know, the SPY is the market. So I'm watching both my eyes. Okay. This is, this is good. So now I can kind of explain what I'm doing. So my eyes are going from the SPY to my six charts instantaneously assessing the bid and the ask on each chart. So I want everybody to realize what kind of personality you need. Sorry for that. What kind of personality you need to do this, right? It's got, you've got to be on fire to do this. And I'm not saying I'm great, even though I am, I'm, <laughs> come on, you know what I'm saying, right? Come on. You, you see my, you see my confidence you have to have in this. Now, Absolutely. I'm, a very humble person, you know, I mean, I, I, I've given generously during this a COVID a couple thousand dollars down in South America, a couple of Southeast Asia, you know, I go out of my way. The point of the matter is when it comes to this, everybody, you're at war. Let me say it again. I know say, oh, enjoy your trading. Okay, I'm going to enjoy my trading with like a bazooka gun or a tank or a Sarasat, a, a sniper. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what you're doing here. So, so cool? we, we did we did get a really quick question about this trade. What was your stop and uh, and what was the dollar percentage of your drawdown relative to your account on this trade? So I'll tell you where the stop is. Um, do you see the green candle before this one? Right? Yeah, I start getting nervous when it starts going much below that, right? Because it's like kind of a okay. First of all, I have like a like on this stock like. Mm, 80 cent is where I'm willing to cut it. So if you subtract 80 cents from that hammer, that's where like, where it's like 50, like 50, right? Go down 80 cents from there. From, from, I'm sorry, from where? No, from, from the, from the red hammer. Uh, I got it on my screen. Let's see. So that's 20 cents plus another 50. So yeah, it's the bottom of that hand. It's the, it's the bottom of this next candle. That's where exactly where it kind of, where, where it ended up selling off to. Right, yeah, exactly. Right, no, the bottom of the the wick. The wick, right here, twenty two twelve or two twelve fifty. Right, it's pretty similar as I said, eighty cents below the hammer, and that's basically where it was. Right. Yep. It is. 
So there you go. Now, okay. remember, I remember all my stop losses to verbally right now because that was in the morning. You know what I'm saying? But a lot's got to do with the bid and ask. If the, if the, if the buyers are kind of fading, if I see not many buyers step in and I'm going to get out. I'm not going to wait to my stop loss. Does everybody hear that? Does everybody hear that? You're not going to wait for your stop loss? I'm not going to wait for my stop loss if I see the, the level two, the bid and the ask falling off. Gotcha. This, this so, so, so Jim, Jim, real quick, just to, just to elaborate on that point, we did have a question earlier uh, with one minute trading. Are you setting hard stops or mental stops? And I think you pretty much just addressed that. Yeah. It's pretty much impossible to set a hard stop, right? Let's, let's all agree on that. Right. When you say that, unless you've got some technology or something that, you know, can put in a, a stop loss as soon as you put a buying, which I wouldn't recommend because every, everybody can see that. And we, we all know what's price discovery all about, Ryan. It's just looking for other people's stops. Yes? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we don't want to go and give them our, for our money, right? So we want to be hidden. We want to be hidden, right? We want to be able to do stuff what we want on the fly. So everybody needs to realize that I'm executing these trades most, I shouldn't say mostly, but most of the time off the bid and the ask on the level two. This is a level two deal here, right? My my one minute time frame is mostly driven by level two. So let me tell everybody when, when you're ready for this and when you want to get into this, you need to go on YouTube and you need to study a lot of YouTube videos um, on level two. So how are we doing, Ryan? You want to go next one? Yep. We're doing good. What's the next chart you want me to pull up here? Yeah, you choose. All right. Let's do the, you had another, you had this trade uh, big, big lots. So big lots. Let me a big lot. Excuse me. So here you go. Oh. So this is a little bit. Oops. This is a little bit grainier here. So go ahead. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. It's so um, right. so go ahead. Take, walk us through it. Let me let me bring up the tweet too. That should help. Okay. So here's my thinking. Um, my my bias for big was long. All right. But the spy was unable to determine. I don't know why. You know, this is this was a few months ago. And and just this is going to be cool. Uh, Jermaine was the one to help me choose a lot of these charts for you. So he thought these would be the best learning ones. So any questions he can he can answer. Ha ha ha. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. I there. like that. <laughs> so you're out there, brother. So, OK, unable to determine a strong bias on the spy. So that's going to make me have a lower. A lower position size. Do you agree, Ryan? Uh, I'm sorry. I was reading Jermaine's comment. He was laughing. So repeat uh, it for me. There's, there's, um, there's more risk when I'm not a hundred percent sure about a lot of the other, um, you know, uh, variables or parameters. Sure. Okay. That's, that's pretty well put. So, um, I wasn't able to determine a strong bias in spy and it was almost a no trade day, which means I didn't have very many candidates, if any mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. Right. So this big was a big gap up. <laughs> it was big was a big gap up. Right. So what am I doing, Ryan? I'm looking long. Yes. Yep. Well, what happened at the open boss? Looks like they took profit. Perfect. And then what happened? I'm looking for a trigger. There's it reversed. My and then after after I made the trade and it popped really hardcore, I don't think I, I added on this. Um, I put a little magenta line in there for everybody to see. Oh, what does that look like? Fifty one dollars. Hmm. Is that a round number? Hmm. Yep, sure is. Okay. So let me read the rest of it. It says big entered at $51, right at 51, like I said, at 932.13, scaled out. Well, I was wrong on that. Sorry. It took profit then on the way up. The best one, the best scale out was 51.76. Okay, that's pretty high up there. And then at 932.55, but I had a loser and beyond. Anyway, I'm just showing people that there's a profit of 170 bucks. That's a green day. But, you know, you got to be, oh, great. I'm so thankful I remembered this. You got to walk away, okay? You got to have the, the inner strength to walk away when you make a profit and not continue to trade. And everybody's like, oh, well, you're such a good trader. Why don't you stay there and continue to trade? Because my journal, see, we forgot to talk about that too, uh, Ryan, is the journal. Uh, yeah, we're getting on 10 minutes left. So, journaling right you want to journal everything you want to journal your emotions you want to journal your um your diet you want to journal like you said boss and the good you covered this already is if you're having issues at home or problems or your health is not good you want to put that all in your journal right and my journal shows me that if i have a profit on my first winning trade that typically i will end up losing or giving it back now i have no problem boss let this go down on on, on paper right now that if I have a losing trade, my first my first trade is a loser. 
I'm going to continue to trade until I get that, until I can try to get that back. Right now, I don't say until I get it back. So that doesn't mean five trades. Boom, boom, boom. We got to have a stop loss, a profit, a, a loss for the day. So 1500 bucks should be your cutoff, you know, um, or whatever, 700 or whatever. Just make a hard stop for not only each trade, but also for each day. Does that make sense, boss? Yes, it does. So we've got a quick, got a quick question here. First of all, this is a two, one, two reversal. Thank you, Jermaine, for good looking out here. Uh, that, that took place here. We did get a question. How do you determine where to scale out of this trade? Are you using some type of risk reward analysis? Okay. First of all, yes. And yes and no. <laughs> so I'm always looking for one to one minimum. Okay. R one to one minimum R if I can get three to one, that'd be great. That's what my goal is. Okay. Um, I'm looking at the perimeter of the of the broadening formation, which I'm sure that top of that candle might have been close to a, the top of a broadening formation, although I didn't draw it in on that one. Um, but in this case, probably what was overriding is probably why I scaled out on this is probably because um, I, I can't tell you exactly because I don't remember the trade exactly, but I can tell you that it, lots got to do with the tape. How's that? I, I would say that most of my judgments are run by the formation, the broadening formation, and then also the tape and how, how much um, buyers and sellers I see stepping in. Remember, are, you, that's what, are you watching that the level two when this happens? Oh, hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about. This is not, gotcha. this is rarely done just on the candle stuff. Now, so, it does, go ahead. So I was going to say, so that's what you're looking at then. You're looking at, at when the sellers start to line up or when you get to the top of there where you're not going to be able to keep going, you're going to scale out before you actually hit that and before this reverses on you and takes your profit out. Here's a visual, here's a visual on this. Okay. I want you to think, I don't know if you play tennis, but let's pretend you got a tennis ball in your hand, whatever, any sport, right? So you toss the ball up in the air. Do you, or do you not see at the apex of that, the, it, when it changes momentum and velocity, do you not see that it could then it starts to come down? Correct. Yes. Yes. Same le in the level two in the bid and ask. Okay. Everybody's like, bye, 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 bye. Slower buying, slower buying, slower yep. buying. Sell, 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 sell. That's you got to be fast to click on the out when you start seeing that exchange of hands. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. So your your risk your risk reward analysis, if you will, is going to be based on getting a feel for what's actually taking place with the level two, right? So you're seeing more. You're seeing the bias change, right? The, there's a Most ton of buyers. The stock is ripping up, and then all of a sudden the st sellers start to stack in or to start to stack up, and you're thinking it's that momentum is eventually going to end. Perfectly said. Let me make a caveat. Again, I'm assessing many data points. I'm also using the overall SPY. Remember I talked about that? If I start seeing a SPY sell off, I'm going to get the hell out of there. I'm not going to wait around for the buyers and the sellers to tell me. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Got to feel me on this one too. If you're looking at the top of the triangle, <clears throat> you can bet that I'm going to be smarter than most of the people because I'm going to be getting out at the top of the triangle. Not all of it. Maybe I might leave a few shares because it does pop through the top of the triangle sometimes, but you got to realize there's many data points. That's why when people ask me on Twitter, it's like, I can't even enumerate all of them. You know what I'm saying? Because there's so many. Okay. So let's do, let's do the next one. Let's do your um, JMIA trade. How about that? Cool. JMIA was actually a great trader for me too. So I'm really excited to see how you played this. So um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the one minute here. You had okay. several screenshots for this. So I'm going to try to open and open up several. Here's the yeah. daily chart. And then let me also get the tweet on JMIA. All right. So here we go. Walk me through it. I'm going to have to flip between a couple of screens here. So help me out. Okay. So you want to read the tweet? Yeah. So the first thing here, we got JMIA is a long bias. Uh, SPY is undecided. One minute candle on the charts. It's Friday. And I'm so I'm doing this with smaller size. Entered Perfect. above the hammer with the tape at 3839. Um, let me move this out of the way so I can actually see this. At 3839. And at 931, uh, bad fill scaled out. The best scale out was at 3888. And you made 800 bucks on this. Right. So, so, so looking at this candle here, looking at this big green candle, the bottom of this candle is at 3810. Right. So right. I, I already know what I'm thinking. Do you see the hammer right there on the open? right here? Hammer right. right on the, on the, on the, the candle right before it. Absolutely. Okay. There's it's, it's to me, it's super obvious that I'm going to click anything above that. If above that, that hammer, I'm going long. I've rarely seen on a hammer like that or any hammers where it goes much below that opening 
you know, open and the close on a hammer. Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, I might get absolutely. To- so, so the, the bottom wick of this candle is not going beneath the bot, the body of the hammer here. Totally see right. that. And you had also mentioned in here that you had a bad fill, right? So that's probably why you actually entered at 38, 39, instead of a little bit earlier. And then you were able to get out at 38, 88, which is actually above the closing body of this candle. This was almost mm-hmm. the top two. And, and here's, here's a great point is why do you think I got a shitty fill? Sorry for the language is because everybody wants in, everybody wants in, you know? So everybody's clicking long above a hammer. And even though I was watching the level two and I'm like, okay, I saw it coming. I saw it coming 38, 10, and boom, I hit it. And it was like, probably should have hit it like 38 or five. Cause that hammer before that was probably building. Do you see what I'm saying? It was, it was morphing into a hammer. Oh, okay. And I got a really interesting question here from one of the viewers. Are, do you use hotkeys to get in and out or do you traditionally just click the button? Okay. So great question. And I'm going to just say, I'll d- answer you directly. I never use hotkeys. I probably should transfer some money over to a platform that I is faster, but just look, you know, I don't really like telling people this, but I will. My, um, my jobs 401k is in this, is in this brokerage and they, I don't like to tell, well, just let's say I have good, I have very good buying power, right? And because of that, that's why I stay there. So I just kind of deal with um, clicking a mouse instead of a hotkey. How's gotcha. that? Yeah, that makes total sense. And you want to you want to do what makes you comfortable too. So no problem. There's your answer, Floyd. Now here, you also had a daily chart with this screenshot. So what's the significance of what we're seeing on the daily here? White candle, that's a two, right? If I'm not mistaken, right there, yes. So I'm just going to buy long above that. And that this is actually a three. This white candle right here is a three. Right, three. So it's a three, which basically wipes out the you know the one before it. So yep. I'm and there's a lot of strength there, right? So that's what I call a runner. So that's why I'm sorry, Ryan. I know we were, we've been going through really fast here, but you got to realize I'm trying to cover a lot of different things here. And this one specifically, this was a runner versus a gapper. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. This is actually moving up. It's not actually gapping up. Correct. And this, this was crazy too, leading up to this, this stock was crazy. This was making a whole bunch of runs. So I, I see what's going on here now. All right. Perfect. So let's, let's, we're, we're, we are running out of time here. Let's go to another example. You had an AMD trade here. So let me, let me open up that walk me through this one. Let me get the tweet. All right. So, uh, so let's, I'm going to read the tweet here and set this up for you. Then I'm going to have you walk me through the chart. So AMD, another long bias here. Spy is undecided. Enter long above the hammer at the open with the tape filled at 9631 scaled out best at 9713 one and done never greedy 850 on the trade. AMD is a two, two reversal. That's correct. It is a two, two. Now here's something I'm going to tell you that probably a lot of strategists ain't going to like. And I apologize about this, but a lot of times I look at candles and I can create them in my mind. What I, what is a trigger for me. So yes, that's a two, two, but do you see how it opened and closed with the same thing? Some people call it a doji, whatever you want to say. I, I can consider it almost a hammer. Why? Because in my mind, I'm looking for it to go long. For me, that's an easy location to go long after that opening bar. Do you see what I'm saying? Sure do. Okay, look, look, everybody had the same idea too, because as soon as it went above that pre-market kind of like range, I hate to call it a range, let's call it price aggregation. I don't want Rob coming after me, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, and what, what would that be about 96.25? That's where all those tops are right there. It's, and that everybody also is thinking the same thing. They're like, okay, well, I'm going to go long because those are going to stop out all those pre-market people. Yes, yes. Can I hear yes? Yes. It's out all those pre-market people. That's what that's doing. All right. And then this actually keeps going. So you actually held this into the next candle if you were able to get out at 9713, which would have been right up here. Correct. And that's why sometimes when I show a screenshot, I will show like a candle or two afterwards because that's actually where my either my full out was or my partial scale out was. Okay. Awesome. So so that's the, so let's go through another one here. Tesla. Just Yay. I did that. I did that just for Rob, just because uh-huh. I, I love that so much. I actually say that to people now and they look at me like I'm crazy, but that's okay. I know what it means. So let's go ahead and open up Tesla here. I'm gonna go ahead and read you the tweet again. Walk me through it. So we've got um, Tesla, good volume and clean tape, two minute candle charts, rare afternoon trade. Interesting, interestingly enough. Entered long above the hammer, 603.39, then added, scaled out at 607.29, total of 1400 bucks. 
Right. So again, in my mind, this is like looking also, there's many thoughts here. Okay. Let me, let me start at the beginning. I'm sorry. So afternoon trade, why did I do it? I don't know. Probably I was sitting at my desk and, you know, I hate to say boredom and that's not right. Cause I shouldn't be teaching that. Right. But I mean, it happens. Okay. And I don't ever trade in the afternoon. I can tell you that my journal will show you maybe, maybe, I don't know, five or 10 times in my whole life. And I just don't like, it. you know, I just think it's the price action is not as good as it is in the morning. Now, let me bring you to this. Tesla's a different beast. It kind of even operates different than spy, right? So it had really good volume. So that's why I put it in there. It had good volume, everybody. It had a clean tape. When I say that clean tape, look at 603. Does everybody see 603? Right Six, here. What is it? 603, is that what I put in my tweet? I can't even remember. Yeah, 603.39 is the entry. It looks like the magenta line is exactly at that level. Okay, so there, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. You know, this stuff should be beautiful. This stuff should be fun to everybody. This is supposed to be fun. Oh my God, I just remembered something I want to tell you guys. Remember, when you have to trade for money, it ain't going to work out. You have to trade because you want to be a good trader. Let me say it again. You want to trade, you trade because you want to be a good trader, not because you're trying to make money. Then by doing so, you you're going to end money. up making money. <laughs> Amen. Yes, sir. So, yeah. So just to recap here, it obviously put this hammer in. You saw some good macro conditions, as you mentioned in the tweet, good volume and a clean tape. As soon as it broke the top of the hammer, which is right around 603.39, you're able to enter. Tesla is super liquid. So I have no, uh, I, I, I totally understand how you would have been able to get into this. And then you ended up scaling out again. This was in the second candle. Uh, the best was at 607.29. That's slightly above where this body actually closed. Right. Yes. Awesome. So you were, you were in this, you were in this trade for just under four minutes. Yeah, that's a long one for me. And um, the other thing I want to tell you, you commented on was um, I didn't, click the button at 603.39. I was looking at 603 because it's a round number, but I got filled at 603.39, which I gotcha. sure you know. Got gotcha. right. Okay. So we're, yeah. we're, we are one minute over, but we are going to do one more example real quick, James, because we're okay. running through these. And this is, this is another popular stock here. This is one that's being traded all the time. This is NVIDIA. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this one. Uh, numbers are a little bit difficult to see in this screenshot, but you can still see the broadening formation along with the entry level, the magenta line that's right there. Let me read the tweet and set the stage for you. NVIDIA spy initial sell-off followed by a long. Okay, interesting. One minute candle charts entered broadening formation at 528.12 and then all out at 529.29. Um, 50 seconds in the trade, taking a few days off now, 1230 on the profit here. This is a 2 2 reversal. So, um, so t walk me through this real quick. Okay. So, <laughs> I can I tell you a couple of things really important. I could talk for a lot about all these really long, but these are the most important things. You see how the candles all before were have really long wicks and tails, yep. right? But you know, the one I took it on, which is the small one, the small green one before it blasts up, it has very, not very much price movement in there. For me, that makes it easier um, to see it's gaining some type of, um, you know, buyers or sellers or equilibrium yes does that make sense yeah it sure does it's it looks okay. like a measure of momentum or a momentum shift right and then why was i looking down there because you see the blue line underneath that's like a broadening formation right that's, that's it. the bottom of the broadening formation right and then um okay this is another part part and point you see where the top of the big candle is how it's it goes into an area people are going to say that's supply up there no it's not supply it's not demand it's just basically where sellers wanted to sell right so that's why i noticed a lot of tape reading uh, when i was reading the tape that people were starting to get out like when we toss the ball up in the air and the ball like kind of gravitates for a split second up there before it starts coming down i saw the swap out going and that's when it started scaling out awesome i went all out i can't remember yeah all out no. it was all out. I was all, oh, probably because it popped up really fast. Yeah, probably. all out at 529.29. So, all right, awesome. So we are in fact out of time. I did keep you for a couple of minutes extra. I couldn't resist. What can I say? So, so James, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. I got to say, um, really, really happy that you bring psychology into trading. I think that that's often overlooked. I don't think enough people understand that the psychology is going to play a huge, huge, huge. role in your trading. And, and the way that you set yourself up before the trading day actually starts, I think that goes a long way to your success. What do you say? 
Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me here. And I got to leave everything with one thing is just the mindset is huge. It's basically what will make you a successful, continuously profitable trader. Thank you so much. Great piece of advice. Couldn't agree more. Thank you, everybody, uh, for joining us. Yes, this will be recorded. Yes, it will be available for the replay. James, uh, Jim, James, thanks for, thanks for joining us. Thanks, all of you viewers, for joining us. And remember, until next time, folks, happy trading.